Uh, it's called uh, en uh, EnviroBear 2000. <laughs> So it just goes to show what kind of things you can actually do in games if you start thinking about what, what the basic mechanics of something is. And you can actually do a game like the driving game where the controls totally suck. <laughs> and actually make it pretty fun to play. <laughs> this is way more interesting than uh, the newest Bridge Racer game that I played. No, unfortunately, no, I think that would make it. <laughs> damn, I think I lost it. <laughs> anyway, do you guys have pens and papers already? Or is there time for another spell on here? So yeah, um, so the title of this talk uh, is creating in games and making them. Um, I actually have another problem with this title, uh, and the problem is that creativity is a trademark of Tim Lang, though. Uh, so, so, in, in, uh, so basically the title of creativity in games and in making them isn't very unique in my opinion, so I decided to call this talk uh, Making Shit in Games and Making Shit Games. <laughs> <laughs> because I thought that would be more appropriate. Uh, and it's also kind of handy because now it's divided into two parts where the first part is about making shit games and uh, making shit in games and another part is making shit games. And uh, let's get started with making shit in games. I really like to use the word shit a lot. Uh, so I'm going to start talking about creativity, and this is a uh, this is actually a game design problem that I've had. Is uh, and I'm going to present the problem to you. And I hope the reason why I'm talking about this problem is I think the time is right for someone to actually do an interesting game uh, based around creativity in games. I'm going to start talking about creativity in games by ripping off another lecture. And this is a, I don't know if any one of you has actually seen this lecture, but I highly recommend that you write down the name and check it out later because it's an awesome lecture uh, about creativity and play and about the link between them. And we're going to do a small exercise from here. And the idea of the exercise is, this is what you need pens and papers for, is that you're going to draw a portrait of your neighbor so you're going to draw a picture of someone who's sitting next to you and you've got only 30 seconds to do it. And so pick up your pens and start drawing someone who's sitting next to you and you only got 30 seconds to do this. <laughs> so meanwhile I can play some more <laughs> So keep drawing. <laughs> yep. 15 more seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. <laughs> So, I hear a lot of laughter, and did I hear somebody saying that they're sorry? <laughs> What happens a lot when you do this with adults? Uh, on the contrast, if you do, do this with kids, they're really proud of what they did. They really want to show what they did to everyone. But if you do this with adults, they're really ashamed of what they did. And this is apparently because uh, people are uh, really afraid to share their wacky ideas with their peers. They're afraid of critique. And, uh, 
because of this fear of critique, people tell themselves that they're actually not that creative and they don't actually want to do anything. Because, uh, well, you know, you get kind of easily laughed at. <laughs> and then the other problem is that there's also uh, people tell that they don't have the technical skills to draw, so they don't begin drawing in the first place, because uh, if you don't have the technical skills, then you can do the pictures that you have in mind, and then you might also be laughed at because for your lack of skills. And we know that. But then from Lost Garden, and I highly recommend that you use the pens that I gave you and write this article down as well, uh, wrote about uh, paint box games. And he pointed out uh, in this article that games would be a totally excellent medium to do uh, things where you could actually uh, make people be more creative. Um, you could address these two problems that you have, uh, for example, fear of critique. A uh, computer game doesn't laugh at you if you do something. So you can do something very creative and it can be totally horrible, but no one's going to laugh at you, so you, you don't have that problem. And the lack of technical skills, you can address that by doing easy enough tools for people to use so they can actually draw the pictures that they want to do or build the things that they really want to do. And so what I'm proposing is that what if we would do a game where um, the action in the game would be to be creative in a way, in the same way that we fit is about, we fit is about losing weight or exercising or uh, Sing Star is about learning to sing better, or World of Warcraft is about making money for actors and Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> so, but in that wrote a bunch of rules about uh, bandbox games, and he pointed out uh, that, first of all, players uh, can feel or assemble something new and unique to the world, this requirement for bandbox games. Number two, um, the game provides tools that facilitate and reduce the cost of content creation. And number three, the game uses game mechanics and feedback systems to encourage players to create. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to give you some examples of games, like Team Park is a game about uh, being creative. You draw this, you design this Team Park and you build your own roller coaster and stuff like that. And it has pretty easy to use tools and it's actually pretty fun to do and be creative in the game. Uh, Spore is another game about <laughs> being creative. Uh, the creature editor in Spore is probably the best part of the game. It's so much fun to actually do things, to, to assemble your creatures. The big problem in this game is that uh, the creatures that you do, they don't actually have that much effect in the actual game, so it kind of feels a bit off. Uh, Little Bit Planet is another new game which I actually don't think is a paint box game because uh, the basic mechanic is platforming in Little Bit Planet but it has this totally awesome and easy to use uh, level editor tool which would be, would be a paint box game if the game would only be about building stuff in the level editor but because it's kind of an extra thing there's no game mechanic that actually requires you to build stuff so it's not really a paint box game but it's pretty close to one so, why would you want to do a game about creativity? Uh, well, there are a couple of reasons. You could do the YouTube of games, which is that you could easily get free content enough. And this is probably the reason why people uh, in suits are currently interested in this stuff, is that they're trying to figure out how to do the YouTube of games and get a lot of free content and make a lot of money. Uh, I don't think this is actually the reason why you should do uh, game about creativity because this is um, an effect if you do a decent game. This is not a reason to do a uh, game about creativity. I think the reason why you would want to do a game about creativity is that making shit is fun. <laughs> creativity is fun. So we know, everyone knows that making stuff like building things and being creative is actually really fun. So I think there's a possibility of actually doing a really interesting and fun game based around the uh, ability to build new things. And I think the important point is no one is currently doing anything about this, really. There, there aren't that many people exploring what could be done with if you do a game about being creative. Uh, or if there are people doing it currently, they're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so 